Today, we're diving deep into foundational concepts in Python programming, control flow, and loops. Let's make our program smarter by adding some logic. Python's control flow tools like if, else if, and else allow you to make decisions in your code. We'll start with the basics, then move on to more advanced topics, ensuring that by the end of this video, you'll have a strong grasp on how to control the flow of your Python programs using conditions and loops. I'll be providing lots of code examples along the way. So let's jump right in. First, let's talk about what control flow actually means. When you write a Python program, the code usually runs sequentially from the first line to the last. But what if you want your program to make decisions? That's where control flow comes in. Control flow allows your program to take different paths based on certain conditions. In Python, the primary structures that allow you to control the flow of your code are the if, elif, and else statements. Let's start with the if statement. The if statement is used to execute a block of code if a specific condition is true. Here's a simple example. In this example, we have a variable called age with a value of 18. The if statement checks whether age is greater than or equal to 18. If it is, the message you are eligible to vote gets printed to the console. Notice the colon after the if condition. This tells Python that the next indented block of code is what should be executed if the condition is true. But what if the condition is not true? That's where the else statement comes into play. The else statement allows you to define an alternative block of code that will run if the if condition is false. Let's extend our previous example. Here, if age is less than 18, the message you are not eligible to vote yet will be printed instead. Now, what if you have more than two conditions? That's where the elif statement comes in handy. Elif, short for else if, lets you check multiple expressions for truth value and execute a block of code as soon as one of the conditions is true. Here's an example. In this case, if age is 17, the program will print, you can register to vote next year. If none of the conditions are met, the else block will be executed. Sometimes, you might need to check more than one condition within another condition. This is where nested if statements come in. You can place one if statement inside another if or else block. Here's how. In this example, the program first checks if the age is 18 or more. If that condition is true, it then checks if the person has an ID. If both conditions are true, it prints that the person is eligible to vote and has their ID. If only the first condition is true, but the second is false, it reminds the person to bring their ID. Now, let's take a moment to talk about logical operators, which are often used with if statements. The main logical operators in Python are AND, OR, and NOT. They allow you to combine multiple conditions. AND ensures that both conditions must be true. OR ensures that at least one condition must be true. NOT inverts the truth value of the condition. Here's an example. This condition checks if the person is eligible to vote and if they haven't already voted. These control flow tools are crucial for making decisions in your programs. Imagine you're building an app that needs to behave differently based on user input. This is how you do it. Here's a quick challenge for you. Write a program that checks if a number is positive, negative, or zero, and share your code in the comments. All right, now that we can make decisions, how about repeating actions? Loops in Python are perfect for tasks that require repetition. Loops are incredibly powerful and they're everywhere in programming. Let's start with the while loop. A while loop repeatedly executes a block of code as long as a specified condition is true. Here's a simple example. This loop will print the value of count as long as count is less than or equal to five. Each time the loop runs, count increases by one. Once count becomes six, the condition count equals five is no longer true, and the loop stops. Be careful with while loops though, if the condition never becomes false, you'll end up with an infinite loop, which will cause your program to run indefinitely. To avoid this, you can use the break statement, which immediately exits the loop, even if the condition is still true. In this example, the loop will stop once count exceeds five, thanks to the break statement. Now let's talk about another type of loop, the for loop. Unlike the while loop, which continues until a condition is false, a for loop, iterates over a sequence, like a list, tuple, or string, and executes a block of code for each item in that sequence. Here's a simple example. This loop will print a statement for each fruit in the list. 
The variable fruit takes the value of each item in the list one by one. Often, you'll want to loop over a sequence of numbers. Python's range function is perfect for this. This loop will print the numbers 0 through 4. The range 5 function generates numbers starting from 0 up to, but not including 5. You can also specify a start, stop, and step value. This loop starts at 1 and prints every second number up to, but not including 10. In some cases, you might want to skip certain iterations of the loop without stopping the loop entirely. The continue statement lets you do just that. When continue is encountered, the loop immediately moves on to the next iteration. Here, when i equals 3, the loop skips the print statement and moves directly to the next iteration. As a result, the number 3 is not printed. Next, let's explore nested loops. A nested loop is a loop inside another loop. This is useful when you need to work with multidimensional data structures, like lists of lists. Here's a basic example. In this example, the outer loop runs three times, and for each iteration of the outer loop, the inner loop runs three times. This results in nine combinations of i and j values being printed. Nested loops can get complex, so it's important to keep track of your indentation to ensure you know which loop you're controlling. Now let's talk about something that might surprise you, using an else clause with loops. In Python, loops can have an else clause, which is executed when the loop completes all iterations without encountering a break statement. Here's how it works. In this example, after the for loop finishes printing all the numbers, the else clause runs, printing loop completed successfully. However, if we introduce a break statement, the else block won't be executed. Since the loop is interrupted by the break statement when i equals 3, the else block does not run. Python's loops are not limited to just numbers and ranges. You can use loops to iterate over any iterable data structure. Let's look at some examples. In each of these examples, the loop iterates over the items in the data structure, making it incredibly easy to process elements in lists, tuples, strings, and dictionaries. Before we wrap up, I want to introduce a powerful feature in Python, list comprehensions. This is a concise way to create lists using a loop in a single line of code. Let's say we want to create a list of squares for numbers 1 through 5. Here's how you would typically do it with a loop. Using list comprehension, you can achieve the same result more concisely. You can even add conditions inside a list comprehension. This example creates a list of squares for even numbers between 1 and 5. List comprehensions are not only concise, but also often faster than using traditional loops. Here's a quick challenge for you. Can you write a loop that prints the first 10 even numbers? Give it a shot and share your code in the comments. I hope this session has given you a solid understanding of how to control the flow of your Python programs and how to effectively use loops. These concepts are fundamental and mastering them will make you a much more proficient Python programmer. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future content. Feel free to drop any questions you have in the comments below. I love hearing from you and helping you out. If you enjoyed this in-depth tutorial, please consider supporting the channel by sharing this video with your friends. Also, if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover in an upcoming video, let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding!